Guys, what is going on? Back again with another Arbitrum ecosystem update. As usual, nothing in this video is financial advice, and everything I say is my opinion and my opinion alone. Uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, we have a tweet here by Anil Lula uh, of Delphi Digital. Uh, they say that over the weekend, our team at Delphi Digital partnered with Blockworks uh, to apply to be the research-oriented members of Arbitrum. You can read the full proposal here, um, and then they go on to say a few words about Blockworks and the partnership. So before I jump into the proposal uh, real quick, just wanted to touch on the fact that Delphi Digital and Blockworks uh, technically are competitors. Um, and, you know, they both uh, Anil and actually uh, Jason uh, of Blockworks have uh, put out a thread kind of talking about this, uh, essentially this partnership that they're forming, even though they are technically uh, competitors. Uh, and I want to say how, like, how cool that is, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. I think, like, when there's uh, opportunity uh, to be kind of, uh, to be captured, which I think, you know, DAOs have a ton of that. Um, I think, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll have people, you'll have organizations or, or, or individuals kind of uh, trying to, you know, obviously compete for that opportunity. But I feel like very few instances do you see um, competitors actually kind of forming a relationship together to, you know, go after, the, you know, whatever that opportunity may be. In this case, it's Delphi Digital and Blockworks. So I think it's pretty cool on both of their parts that they did this. Um, but just to add some more color and context on what they actually applied for, um, they didn't actually submit a proposal um, on its own to the DAO. They actually submitted an application uh, to what is the current, uh, the Arbitrum Research and Development Collective. This, I think, recently passed tally. Uh, so there's actually, they're currently going through a uh, election and application process. So those who are interested in contributing to Arbitrum Research and Development, you can actually, you know, come to the forums here, uh, submit your application if you want to you know, be part of it. Uh, as well as, um, I guess it looks like um, elect people at some point soon. Um, I don't have much context beyond that, but I do think it's great to see that they're um, kind of throwing their hats in the ring. Uh, two kind of uh, two entities that have a lot of experience in the industry, uh, you know, kind of help looking to help Arbitrum grow um, from a research and development perspective, which I think is amazing. And for what it's worth, there's definitely a ton of applicants as well who have already submitted uh, some of their proposals. So definitely take a look if you're interested uh, in, you know, seeing more about who kind of wants to contribute to Arbitrum security uh, as well as development. It's great to see stuff like this. I love it. Uh, next, we have a post by uh, oh my God, Mike Lau or a small preeminent. Uh, Mike says, Web3 Gaming News Alert. Treasure DAO is working on a co-authored Arbitrum DAO gaming catalyst program proposal, oh, that was a mouthful, 16 plus pages to earmark 100 to 200 million ARB to bolster gaming on Arbitrum. Uh, and he says, alpha update, the proposal will go live this week. Uh, this is also, by the way, in co, sorry, in um, co-authored, Mike Lau mentioned it was co-authored, uh, with Zai, uh, Zai as well as Dan uh, from Bella. Uh, but Zai says here that they don't <laughs> they don't know we've been working on the Arbitrum DAO proposal to earmark 100 to 200 million ARB to grow gaming. Uh, I will say it's a really interesting partnership. Um, again, this is actually another another scenario where you have two entities that you could kind of perceive as being competitors to each other. You could perceive it that way, um, but have clearly found this opportunity where they can help grow gaming, um, both in crypto, by the way, but as well as more specifically on Arbitrum um, together, you know, using funding that the Arbitrum DAO has. So I think it's, uh, you know, while well, they haven't actually submitted the proposal uh, to the public yet, I'm very excited to see it go live, very excited to see discussion around it. Uh, and just really, it's just great to see people um, and, you know, uh, within the ecosystem collaborating together and, you know, just trying to, like, provide as much value to the ecosystem as possible. Like, that to me is, like, like game number one, priority number one. Like, like that's what we all need to be focused on, um, you know, within the Arbitrum ecosystem and within crypto in general. Um, you, you hear a lot, I think, about people talking about, like, oh, well, you know, we're not competing against each other. We're really competing against, like, Web2 and all, the, all that other stuff, which is true to a certain extent. Um, but, you know, it, it, you, know you, you definitely have to be blind to think that people within Web3 aren't competing with each other at the end of the day because you kind of are to a certain extent. So to see these guys collaborating, to see Blockworks and Delphi collaborating, it's just so cool to see these types of partnerships happening. I'm um, all kind of focused around the DAO, which, of course, makes sense. So shout out to Treasure. Shout out to Zai. Uh, love to see stuff like this. We have a tweet here by GMX. Uh, GMX deployed on September 1st, 2021, when Arbitrum launched. Since its conception, the protocol has facilitated 3.4 million trades by half a million users. 
by more than oh sorry for more than 173 billion dollars in volume and paid out 276 million in fees to its stakeholders thank you for supporting DeFi. that is insane if you just think about the numbers for a second <laughs> 3.4 million trades 173 billion in, in volume that's in that's i can't even like fathom that that's insane um you know, I, I wanted to highlight this post just because, like, I've actually been working here at Offchain Labs and saw the launch of Arbitrum way back when. Uh, I remember when GMX wasn't called GMX. They were called, like, Gambit, I think. Gambit Protocol or something like that. Um, so, so it's just, it's it's insane sometimes to kind of, like, look back and see, and, like, just to see how far we've all come. Uh, GMX obviously being one of the first OG DeFi projects on Arbitrum to deploy. Um, and, you know, all the way up until today, kind of, you know, leading the charge for DeFi and Arbitrum uh, amongst like hundreds of other protocols. Uh, and I definitely have to point that out too. that, like, you know, it's so beautiful to see all this kind of collaboration going on within one chain, one network. Like it, it's, it's partially why, like when you talk to people uh, who, you know, in crypto who use Arbitrum and regularly use these DeFi uh, products and applications, you know, you'll like, they'll essentially tell you like, like Arbitrum today is what is, is, is kind of what Ethereum felt like back then you know this extremely kind of just like open-ended uh tons of builders kind of just like uh you know contributing to like the whole uh DeFi, DeFi lego framework uh and all that i mean i just said a bunch of like <laughs> i said a bunch of buzzwords in one sentence but the point is that you know DeFi and arbitrum has always been amazing it will continue to be amazing i think um especially with the proliferation of, of stylus when developers can come in and code in Rust, C, C++, and you're going to see a lot more innovative dApps kind of coming in there as well. But, um, you know, protocols like GMX and a ton of the other ones that, that, that have been out here since day one, um, incredible, you know. Uh, and there's still tons more launching today. I think recently, actually, you know, I, I didn't make a video on it because it was a little while ago. It was recent, but it wasn't, but it was still long enough ago where I wasn't doing these videos um, that uh, I think Arbitrum, the amount of our products deployed on Arbitrum passed Polygon. So I think right now Arbitrum is number three in total and highest amount of projects deployed on, uh, right behind BSC and Ethereum, I think. Could be wrong, but check DeFi Llama for that. Uh, I'm referencing DeFi Llama stats for that. But it's a pretty pretty insane number. And I only expect that to grow. So yeah, shout out to the GMX for being so early. Um, you know, it's been a pleasure working with everyone since then. We have a tweet here by Cryptex Finance. Live for today, build for tomorrow. If I live for today, build for tomorrow. Uh, Cryptex, uh, I'm actually mainly highlighting this video, A, because cryptic, the guys at Cryptex are amazing. They're, they've, they've always been good to me, and uh, I, I've actually, I was actually uh, working with them so long ago, uh, even before Arbitrum, um, or Opchain Labs, I should say. Um, so, you know, they have a special place in my heart. Um, but also, they just kill every single video that they do. Do you see this production work? It's insane. Give the video a watch, you know, show them some support in the comments, because whoever edits these videos, I mean, dude, I don't know how long this takes. But I used, to, I used to edit videos a lot. I don't edit these videos because it's way too much work. But whoever edits these videos, I don't know how long. It, it must take them a long time to do it. So yeah. shout out to the Cryptex team for continuing to fire on all cylinders in terms of media production, uh, as well as, you know, feel free to check out their app if, if, if you please as well. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, more oh, tech-related stuff now, of course. Got to talk about the tech a little bit. Got a tweet here by Max Lomu. Uh, Max says, the other point, in my opinion, is the high-level vision for the Orbit network. How to make Arbitrum Orbit more attractive than the super chain, not looking at the single L2 tech, but at the coalition and exponential forces coming out of it. Uh, now, this is in reference to a tweet that Jojo put out um, about the, uh, you know, grants and all things related to, um, you know, the, uh, the Arbitrum DAO, essentially, right? I think uh, for what it's worth, the, it's really interesting. So, you know, I think, I think we can all probably agree that at this point, you know, marketing sells more than anything, right? If you can market a product like, like uh, an, an incomplete product with marketing will most likely do well better than a complete product with, with no marketing, right? Because you know, at the end of the day, no one knows about it if you're not marketing it, right? So it makes sense. Um, what I will say is that one thing that attracts a lot of builders is the idea of interoperability and like um, the feeling of kind of a, a feeling clo close to like close to everybody. So... Uh, what I mean by that is that, like, the initial point of blockchains, uh, in my mind, is the f is the fact that everything was permissionless, and you could interact with things, like I said, without needing permission from whoever's building on that same chain. Like, it's if you know, for example, if I'm building my own app, I can technically 
uh, plug into Uniswap without asking Uniswap for permission, right? I can access liquidity from, from their pools without literally talking to the Uniswap Labs team. And I can do that similarly with any app that lives on Arbitrum um, or any other chain. It's just how it works, right? Uh, as long as you're on the same chain, you can do that. Uh, that to me is like one of the biggest, like one of the biggest uh, uh, pros of blockchain is that you can do that. You can build autonomously without asking for permission. Um, the, the, the idea, the proliferation of, of app chains, orbit chains, uh, other stack chains um, kind of breaks that uh, because you're essentially creating your own environment now, um, you know, hopefully with the idea that you, your app needs a lot more throughput to manage a lot more onboarding. Um, that being said, that's kind of, I think that's kind of why people like the super chain because people are essentially being promised, hey, you can have your own throughput, but you can still access liquidity, users, smart contracts, et cetera, on other uh, OP stack chains, um, which I think is cool. Um, but I will say that like, I am of the opinion and I, and I, and I think, <laughs> again, it's a marketing thing at the end of the day. So what I'm saying isn't like, you know, the one thing that fixes everyone's kind of perception. Um, what I, they're going to end up using, I think the same solution as, as anyone else does. Um, I think they're going to end up using espresso systems, <laughs> so, like, like for, for a shared sequencing, um, and maybe even like cross chain transactions. Um, and then even at that point, like the, 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 the problem with the super chain is that you're essentially in a walled garden that forces you to only interact with other OP stack chains that follow a very specific set of rules, whether it's governance, whether, whether it's shared governance, um, or even like, um, you know, having the same code base, if you can't modify the code base uh, to do whatever custom thing you want to do, um, you kind of have to follow a set, set rule of instructions and that's just kind of how, how it has to be. Meanwhile, orbit chains, you can essentially do whatever you want with your orbit chain, but still be able to interact with other chains if you're using Espresso Sequencer, assuming that that's going to be the shared mechanism that everyone uses. Um, or if you try to, uh, and this, this is a long way down the line as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, or if you want to tap into chain clusters, which is the ability for kind of like a shared set of uh, orbit chains that have the same validators uh, to pretty much be composable with each other. So similar to kind of what the super chain thesis is supposed to be, uh, it's like the same thing, but without the walled garden. <laughs> so um, but just my thoughts on that thing. Uh, I think marketing is going to be really important, but I think more than marketing is just seeing results, right? So I think the more orbit chains you see launch, the more you see become successful uh, with Xi, Rari Chain uh, being two good examples of ones that are already out and already doing great. Um, you know, I think the, the tech will speak for itself at some point, but, uh, but the marketing definitely has to be there too. And, um, you know, let's see. Uh, and I'd, I'd definitely, I'd love to see the DAO kind of throw in some more initiatives as well to kind of help uh, bolster orbit chain creation um you know over other stacks because at the end of the day it's like you know it's, it's essentially the only stack right now that like you can actually scale for i think for the masses you know hot take <laughs> but that's that's my opinion anyways let, let's keep going well maybe i got the last tweet here i essentially i i pretty much just said everything here but i'll read the tweet anyways uh i said arbitrum tech will power everything that relies on immutable permanence and stack level modularity so whenever you feel overwhelmed by the amount of stack choices for what you're building just remember that anything is possible on arbitrum uh, and that is the truth, uh, at least for the most part. <laughs> you can do almost anything on Arbitrum. Uh, at least anything you can do anywhere else, you can do on Arbitrum, which is pretty cool. Uh, but the most important thing, though, I think, is that immutable permanence. If you go to L2B right now, um, you know, there's a reason why Arbitrum has the most amount of TVL and I think the most amount of, uh, of user activity, for the most part. I mean, obviously, the TPS changes if we're going by TPS. Um, but you know, in terms of TVL, in terms of projects deployed, Arbitrum has the most. It's, it's not even really a question at this point between other L2s. It's just a fact. Uh, and I think the reason for that, beyond the community that's been built, uh, the ecosystem that's been kind of cultivated in the last two plus years, uh, is the fact that everyone knows that it's essentially like the closest to Ethereum that, an L, that a layer two can be, right? Their fraud proofs are deployed. Um, Bold is being implemented, uh, hopefully sometime this year, essentially allowing for permissionless validation. Um, as well as, you know, having fully on-chain governance, right? Like, like literally the DAO controls Arbitrum. No one else controls it. The DAO literally has the keys to Arbitrum. So if you hold ARB, you are the DAO, literally. That's just how it works. Um, and I think a lot of people don't put enough emphasis on that. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I, we, could, we could all probably agree that, you know, not that many people care about decentralization. Even on crypto Twitter, you think the people that would care, they don't really care, <laughs> you know? Um, you know, so... Because social decentralization is extremely important, 
100%, right? But technical decentralization is like the backbone of social decentralization. Like if you have a lot of people interested in a topic that truly care about it, that's amazing. That are willing to contribute their time towards it and help kind of uh, deliver to the vision for it. Um, that's great, but it all kind of falls apart when you can't actually execute um, at a decentralized angle, right? Uh, and that's kind of where Arbitrum, I think, falls, is that literally it, it has both of those. Literally, it has social decentralization and technical. Like, you, I was just going to the forums, and you saw all the different posts and discussions that people are having uh, autonomously with, without the foundation or anyone else involved, all community-driven. Um, this is why I say anything is possible in Arbitrum, because you can literally create the future of Arbitrum. The STIP, LTIPP, this uh, gaming proposal, all that stuff was driven by the community and no one else. That's the insane part about all this stuff. Nothing is driven by the foundation. But if you look at other ecosystems, it's the exact opposite. Um, I implore you to uh, check your local chain or your local DAO or ecosystem and see who's actually kind of pulling the strings per se. Because uh, chances are it's not decentralized or not as decentralized, right? Decentralization is a spectrum, I will always say that. But, um, uh, that you know, it's uh, the difference is pretty big though between our Arbitrum and the, the one nearest to it. So just wanted to point that out. Um, but as usual, to end everything off, I got a little shill for Beneath the Layers. Uh, it's a community-focused show. Oops, drop my headphones. Uh, a community-focused show dedicated to showcasing entrepreneurs in Web3 and telling their stories. Hosted by your boy, Hunter. Um, had a couple of guests here. We have uh, ooh, Ellie from Starkware, uh, Jill from Espresso Systems, and a ton of other great guests like Ed from Offchain Labs, Preston, Ben Loon, as well as Roland Jordan. Uh, who uh, you know created Pris uh, Prism uh, and a couple other people Amit, uh, G Funk, great guest, amazing guest. Make sure to check it out X, YouTube, Spotify, etc. Where you can find it on all those platforms. And as usual, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.